Um, my name is Errol McGlashan and I'm a performance poet. I got started in poetry just over two years ago. I would describe my style of poetry as um, banging Dr. Zeus rhymes with um, Errol all over them. So um, they're, they're about my life. It's about how I see things. Um, a lot of them is the struggle with my love life. My influences are many and varied, you know. I'm influenced by a man like Jonas McLeod. I'm influenced by um, David J. I'm influenced by Def Jam poetry. But um, Dr. Seuss influences me. I'm influenced very much by Khalil Gibran. I love Khalil Gibran. Um, I'm in the process now of memorising some of the poets by um, Khalil Gibran. I'm influenced by Rumi. Uh, what was said to the rose that made it open was said to me here in my chest. But I don't really write poets, poems like that. So even though I'm influenced by them, my, my poetry is not like that. Let me tell you about my poem, The New Me. Um, I grew up in a children's home, so I always knew my mum. And every now and then, you know, the social workers would try and get me and my mum back together, you know what I mean? But eventually she would find me too much and she'd put me in a local home, you know. So um, when I was growing up, um, I'd never heard of university. I'd heard the word, but I wasn't sure what it was. Um, I'd heard of prison. I'd, you know, I knew Ballstall. I knew without a doubt that I would end up going to detention centre in Ballstall. The reason is, is because the other kids in the home had been there and they'd say, um, have you done DC yet? So I knew I was going to go to detention centre. I knew I was going to go to Ballstall. I knew I was going to go to Young Offenders Institute. I knew I was going to go to prison. These were just rites of passage for me. So I'd done all of those. Those were my rites of passage. So, you know, um, I've got into um, trouble. The new me was written as my attempt to kind of try to explain how much I'm trying to leave that life behind. It hasn't done me any services, you know. It's made me what I am, but there's, there's more than just what you see, you know. There's a, there's, there's a new me, there's an old me and there's the new me, and they both make me what I am, but I'm trying to give the new me expression. And that's, that's what that poem is about. This is the me that's required to be, that's inspired, you see, and now, before my confession, this is a new me, so excuse me while I read the warranty and the clause. Ha! Well, it says here quite clearly that this here the new me is complete whole and without any flaw. The old me would scold me. Many times old me told me that I wasn't good enough to do shit. The best thing about the new me is that I now know that the old me was talking load of it. I like the way that spoken word is going in London. You know what I mean? But I'm enjoying the process. I'm really enjoying it. It, it is a good life. You know, you meet many people, you get a chance to express, you get a chance to collaborate with people, you get an opportunity to bring other people on, you know. Um, I really like the way the that it's going. Moment. In the beginning was the word and the word had flow, knew where it had to go, guided by a primary impulse along the path of least resistance, on a mission to illuminate the crown. It was these words that carried light at the speed of sound. These words were poetry, baby. When I think about the contact that I had with poetry when I was at school, what a wasted opportunity because I love poetry now. I love poetry, you know. And um, when, when, when it was given at school, I think I switched off within an hour and refused to switch back on again until I was in my late 40s. School literally put me off poetry. You know what I mean? And how, how's that possible? Because poetry is beautiful. Poetry is beautiful. Poetry is the rhythm of our heart. Poetry is the rhythm of our brain waves. It's the rhythm of our intellect. And how is it that school managed to put us off our own rhythm? Now there's your poetry and there's your performance poetry. As if poetry that is performed is somehow outside the norm. <laughs> performance poetry, these ain't just a couple of token words. Because in the beginning was the word and the word was spoken. In the beginning was spoken word. And these words when recited vibrated. And the people who heard them elated, delighted. You know you can't fight it. When you gasp in the dark and you grasp where the light is. When these words hit the sense and your soul gets excited. Magical symbols and metaphors opening subconscious doors. Sages from across the ages carved these words onto cave walls and then scribed onto scrolls by ancient scholars and bars telling stories of stars. It was these words that kept us connected with that from which we are carved. Well, the poem, um, When I Build It, She Will Come, was influenced 
by a film which has got Kevin Costner in it and it's called Field of Dreams and he wants to build a baseball pitch and the uh, ghost of dead people come to him including his dead father and have said to him, they whisper to him in his dream, when you build it they will come, meaning that when he builds the pitch then the people will come to watch it and I sort of um, took that line and applied it to my love life Lucky in love was the song that was sung for so long in my head Then I read something said by Seneca the Young Well he said luck is what happens when opportunity meets preparation Well opportunities abound so I'm preparing the ground I'm building a basis for love just to happen upon And when I build it, she will come Loneliness, you've been taking the piss I mean there's 7 billion people on the planet How do you even exist? You don't, you're a freaking illusion A fake ache in the chest Oh it's time I moved on from this and followed my bliss Like Joseph Campbell suggests Love if you want to be loved, said Seneca the Younger. So I'm flooding my senses with amazement and wonder. I'm constantly on the lookout for things to appreciate and bask in. I mean, what is there not to love? Come on, I'm asking. I'm building up my value sensitivity, my eyes on the outcome. And when I build it, she will come. I really, for once, you know, you know, if there's any teachers out there listening, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like when you're, but when you, when you want to, um, punish your children or parents out there listening when you want to punish your children because you know what I mean they're not behaving in a certain way and that I really wish that instead of being given um, 200 lines I must not talk in class I must not talk in class that they made me sit in the corridor and memorize some poem you know what I mean because that's what I'm having to do now I'm having to memorize poems you know one drop was a poem I wrote about the death of Stephen Lawrence now Somehow, I don't know how it happened, but I managed to get into university when I was in my late 40s. So you can imagine how old I am now. This was a few years ago. And I was at university with a group of 19 to 24 year olds, gorgeous young people. And I was loving the energy and all the rest of it. I got in there, I conned my way in as a mature student because I said, right, I want to write. I want to write, you know. So um, I joined the creative writing course. And this was Greenwich University. And where, where we, one of the courses I was doing was um, poetry and the room where we used to have our poetry class was in a place called the Stephen Lawrence building which was part of Greenwich University and one day the tutor said okay um, we have a yearly competition where we invite students on the creative writing program to write a piece about the Stephen Lawrence situation so you know, I've got to tell you, the reason I got kicked out of uni is because I had problems writing, <laughs> even though I was doing a creative writing course. So, you know, um, I was always late with my assignments or they was never even handed in. So um, we was asked to write a piece about Stephen Lawrence as a competition. As I said, I had problems writing, you know, so, but I'd done it in the end. I handed it in a day late. We could only do 30 lines. I'd done 40 lines and I just thought, you know what, sod it, and I put it in a day late. Um... I got an email from my tutor saying, sorry Errol, um, we cannot accept this poem. Um, the reason being is because that you've got low grades and um, poor attendance. Which was a very strange response because the, um, the competition had nothing to do with my studies. It was an extra curriculum thing, you know, it had nothing to do with it. So I got back in contact with her and I said that is really strange that you would refuse my poem I said I'll put it in a day late I'd expect you to refuse it because it was a day late but not because of my low grades what has that got to do with the price of eggs so she goes sorry oh I don't make the rules so I said well sorry Cherry what is the reason why you are refusing my poem is it because you do not like it is it because I swear in it is it because I criticize the police please be straight with me here's your opportunity you know what I mean so she says she got back to me she says, Errol, okay, I've got to tell you this. There's been a bit of a witch hunt against you um, because, you know, I've managed to talk myself back into university three times after they kicked me out because I didn't appeal. There was people who didn't like me and they just was out to kind of stop me from doing anything, you know what I mean? So I said, listen, I'm performing that poem you know, on the night. So I said, if you don't let me perform the poem, I will get a megaphone and I will come outside the building and I will just perform it. So she goes, okay, Errol, Errol, please don't do that. You haven't been entered for the competition, but there is an open mic afterwards. If I invite you to come to the open mic and perform, 
Will that be okay? So I agreed. Just watch. In her grief and despair, she called on me. The one drop, and we made a pact then and there that we'd never give up. As long as her face held one drop, she was gonna keep bringing it up. And Stephen was not gonna get forgot. So with me, the one drop, she filled up her box. And when they ran her over, she got out her mop. And she forced those fascist cops to clean their shit up. And you know what? Things actually rearranged. Laws had to change. That racist institution was named and shamed. And when science finally caught up with me, the one drop, well, that's when it all came on top. I was the one drop that made the lie stop. And at least two of those little fascist fucks are banged up. And you know what? Nowadays, prison is kind of cushy. But for the next 15 years, they ain't getting no pussy. Cause pets are not allowed in prison and there may come a time when we can forgive them but that time ain't right now so you know what and I think whenever Stephen is brought up and I think about what it has taught us it's the same old cliche said in so many better ways you never give up but when your ass is down on the wire we'll call them that one drop and you know what you're gonna find reservoirs why oi why oi why oi why oi 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 Reveal it in the one drop And we still find time to rock We're making a one stop The generation gap One drop dedicated to the memory of Stephen Lawrence Rest in peace my brother